sakit With Angel, Chris, and our guest today. Go ahead and say your names. Jennifer. Jennifer. Shit. Oh, dude, was Jennifer today? Damn. Just kidding. Hi, who, I'm Nizalda. Who's, who's, who's your friend, Jennifer? Pablo. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Pablo. I'm Pablo. No, what? I'm Emilio. Nice to meet you guys. Holy oh, yeah. shit, bro. All right, Chris is plugged in. Let's I'm go. just, I'm just making sure okay. we're all good. We're all good. All right. So, today, who are you again? <laughs> Nizalda. Nice. This is Nizalda. Emilio. This is Emilio. And uh, you might remember them from such a thing that they did uh, that Chris liked to talk about last year. If you were watching the Us Podcast Season 1, which you all should have been, you would have heard about Chris's little venture into a project called Instant Crush. <laughs> yes, we shot that last year. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, last true. year. It's so weird. It came out this year... And I was just thinking about it because I was getting ready for this interview, and I'm like, damn, it kind of feels like a lifetime ago. I barely remember that set, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, a it's lot a of crush. Time, all of us at this table have been really busy doing yeah. this. Very true. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I would love, I would love to frame this so, for people that don't know who they are, go on their fucking socials. It's gonna pop out right here. Do a fucking deep dive. Watch all their shit. Please do. Come back, and now you know who they are. And actually, to some of, to their credit, some of you I might actually be here because specifically That's for true. them because you know and you love who these people are. And us too. <laughs> and us too. I mean, yeah, you're, you're here for us as well. I think you know why you're We here. have clout as well. But we like, oh, we yeah. also as well have clout, but... but I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's all this one without clout. Um, Cloutless. That, okay. I want to take you That's back right. to before Instant Crush started shooting. I want to know... The, the 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 very first thing I want to know about you is tell me about your life right before you auditioned for Instant Crush. What were you doing? How did it feel like? Where were you in your life before you even stepped foot into the audition room? <laughs> Do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, life before I stepped into the audition room. Uh, I don't know. It was pretty like standard. You know, on the hustle and grind, doing auditions, uh, trying to eat right, go to the gym and stuff like that. But the, the, the moment before my audition, like the literal moment prior to walking into like the Me Too offices, uh, I remember being sort of exhausted and sort of like tired, a little, uh, not fed up with the marathon or, or the hustle of, of, of trying to do creative things in this industry, but you know, just overall long day, I think it was like a four o'clock audition. And um, maybe for whatever reason, that exhaustion brought a sort of relaxation to the audition and mm -hmm. or, or maybe that was just Chris's energy while being in that room but but it definitely translated into uh, a pretty memorable audition definitely like top top three that I've ever had in my life top wow. three auditions sure. well I mean I think a big part of that has to do with the fact that I fucking offered it to him in the room <laughs> absolutely when they when they completely told me not to do that really I think nice. I did I do that with you too I, no, I think I pretty much you said you not <laughs> What did I, I did something I did something to you you said that made you nervous oh before you came in I said hey I followed you on Instagram you're awesome or something like that yeah and it was like wow no pressure <laughs> and, and then like after the fact he's like no I did that to make you feel good I'm like no you you're put like, pressure on me no, this is weird <laughs> yeah, you made this way worse yeah. <laughs> you were creeping on my page yeah. okay. no so, exhausted that's 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 crazy that's crazy because you would you wouldn't think like I, I like that it almost framed the uh, the instant crush audition to just be like it's just another one of these you know, like, oh, it's another, another, yeah. another, another popping in and out. I mean, you went in, you didn't go in cynically, but you were just, you know, like, it's another one. It's, it, 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 it. Well, and then also, like, the, the vibe of that audition, too, like, it, it, it came out of nowhere. Like, it was yeah, so dude. much of a, of a random blessing of just, like, 
oh, like I think I had found out about it like the day or, or day or two before. Like, it was literally the day in? before. I remember. Yeah, that. like can you just come in? And I was just like, I and when you, I think when you don't know what to expect, along with the exhaustion and like just being tired, when you don't know what to expect, when you don't have any like preconceived ideas or notions, I think that always allows for like some real like creative magic to, to happen because there's no hold bars like you don't know what's going to happen yeah and that's that's always yeah, you go audition for spider-man you kind of know what they want from yeah you, you know? it's true yeah and there's this pressure of like oh i'm going for this big role with this big company but at the time i didn't know what me too was i didn't know what those offices were about i didn't know you know chris and what his goal and mission was um so yeah that was my life prior well you kind of did know what me too was i don't want to like completely like the fact checker here yeah uh <laughs> 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 i'm doing it's chris turned into me yeah, yeah, like, actually actually, uh, actually, uh, actually, uh, actually <laughs> mamelio you were affiliated with not. them before <laughs> That's Dude, true. we need a fucking buzzer. <laughs> busted it, that, well, well i say that because that's pretty much how i found emilio uh i've told this story before but really quick <laughs> we were running through all these actors nobody good was coming just a bunch of pretty boys that were trying to you know, be dorky. And here came this ugly, horrendous <laughs> six Logan. foot three. Uh, Toger. Opposite of a pretty boy yeah. guy. A- every... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to say, but I'm going to finish the story. I'm going to streamline they through. They didn't want to make me look that bad. No, yeah. And then even Nizalda was saying, like, which one of these, these pretty boys am I going to get paired her. with? Yeah, yeah. Because she was just like, uh, which pretty boy are you going to pick or something like that? I'm like, see, this is why I'm telling you this is tough. But when we were looking for Andy, I was, I was, I was dead serious about, like, it has to be somebody better or me. Like, because I'm like, cause I can't see anybody else that could do this. Yeah. Role as well as like because I knew the material and I kind of had originally wrote it for myself, but I did I did not I did I wasn't excited to do it, but if I had to, I was gonna. Didn't yeah. you if tell you me had to. if I had they to? They said something to you when you were like, I can do it, and they're like, they said something about that. Yeah, they were just like, no, <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. Just like, like, no. Chris is like, you know what? I think I need to do it. Like, uh, no, could you imagine you were wearing so many hats in that production <laughs> process already? Yeah, to be no, an actor on no, no, it would. No, I literally told. Well, that's another story. But yes, <laughs> but yes, they were sending. Everybody was just sending me a bunch of people, bunch of people, bunch of people, and I just was saying like, no, I guess whatever, sure, fine. And then I get this random. Even I found it recently, and I emailed it to Emilio. And it was uh, this thing that Me Too had done uh, in partnership with like Dodgers called First Dates. It's Emilio, he's wearing like a, like a five o'clock shadow. He's just like, what's up? I'll just play, uh, here's the video. I'm in Los Angeles at Dodger Stadium uh, for the World Series game two, and I'm about to go on a blind date. So that's the video, <laughs> and that was, uh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> was like, wait, all of a sudden, wait. Hold on, how does this movie magic work? <laughs> I didn't see any, what? You know what, perfect time to pull out the fucking Let's video. Let's pull it up. Talking about. You know what? <laughs> This take a minute. Oh, this is how that works. This this is. Is. Put the video. <laughs> that was, wasn't that a great video? No, I, it was like actual terror Clearly, in my eyes. I have not been informed. I wish we could do that. Do you know? Do you know what this is? No. And I also want to see his audition tape. Oh, if that's okay. Oh shit! I don't want to see any of this. <laughs> yeah, this is not. Uh, yeah. So uh, I did a little. Uh, a little. I don't even know what to call this. I guess reality spot it was a blind date essentially i was set up with another girl a real one yeah <laughs> well i don't know how, how honest are we being on this podcast right now because if you're gonna Super bust honest. me out and say that i did this which i did do and i'm not ashamed of it but it's not necessarily it wasn't necessarily a blind date like i, I well, blind date there you go that's just you know i, I went it's like you knew you knew who it was gonna be well the person is like an actress like at the time oh. she was more famous or had more clout than me like i remember they stopped her at the dodger game like fans were like oh my god oh, can we? so obviously this wasn't just like a random you know, He's like, uh, I don't know what I'm houston in. I'm astros fan oh man are we really spilling the tea right now <laughs> do you do you want do you want the real stuff before you play this because there is a there is a background story go, to this whole go, thing. go 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 okay can we can is there there's no way to pause yeah this, we huh? could yeah, can okay we, can wait we pause this? hold on hold on we don't have to pause but but maybe off Th- the this, record real yeah, quick this don't include this uh, okay, never mind. Yeah, never mind. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry, guys. No, I'm sorry. I, I should have had that ready to go. I forgot about that. I forgot that's even part of our history. But anyway, let's get back to it. Womp, womp. 
Well, no. maybe you found so it, we maybe so you didn't. Uh, editor Chris in the future, if you find it, just screen it. But from what you remember, yeah, that's that's pretty much ten the story. That's how I found Amelia. Yeah, I saw that video. Me too, blind date. Yeah, me too, blind date. I saw that video. I said, this food kind of looks like me. I I want him on the show. And yeah, as, as you can tell. Yeah, as you can clearly see. This food looks like me. <laughs> so we brought him on. Um, and I just remember, like, the first time I met him, he was just so excited. Like, he saw me with, like, my, my big jacket and this fucking chain. And then he's just, like, like, I remember he was just, like, I mean, he's just, like, is this, like, I hope this is, like, the director or something. I see him, like, what's up? Are you Emilio? And then fucking give each other a big hug. He was, like, a big brother. He's just, like, fucking excited. Hey, man, Slapped yeah. Slapped his back. Love the script. I really connected with it. Had a great. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, I know Emilio to like well enough to know that's the first thing he does. When Absolutely, he definitely. But it definitely was such a it was do. such a sweet moment, and and then yeah, that's like he crazy. was killing it. I remember we were filming, and I just said, "It's yours," and everyone was like, "Chris," and I was like, "We what? have to shoot next week." I'm like, "I don't want him to. I don't want him to like not be preparing like as soon as possible." I'm like, "Yes, it's yours," and we're gonna try to. We have to get it confirmed first by all the big heads, the big wigs. So bold. Yeah. Chris is like, I don't give a fuck. I have another bold <laughs> moment. I have another bold moment I told you about Nazalda, but oh, Nazalda, yeah. first tell us as Angel began the question with like what was your life like before it's a oh. question. <laughs> I know it's no, been it's so turn. long. No, it's your turn. <laughs> um in life, just before the audition, I had just moved downtown. And um I had been in a place that was supposed to be transitional. Um where I was living beforehand and it ended up being a long-term thing. And so I was pretty down and um, moving downtown was kind of me starting over. And it was actually really funny because uh, I, my hair was like down to my hips. It was really long. Wow. Um, and then my agent dropped me and oh, I remember just, this. yeah, all of these things happened at the same time. And I'm here like panicking because at least an actor that's trying to take herself seriously. It's like, oh my God, I don't have representation. What am I going to do? But um, but then I just kind of decided to let it go. And uh, shortly after, I chopped my hair off and decided I was going to start over. And The Mowgli look, as you called it. I remember <laughs> correctly. <laughs> the Mowgli look? Yeah, I'm Mowgli. I'm Mowgli. I climb trees with short, scraggly hair. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then Jen reached out. Yes, who costume up, designer Jen, Jen Mark. Yeah, Martin, she ended up being. Amazing. Shut up. She's awesome. Shut up, Jen, for sure. But um, I had worked with her on a project like five years prior, four years prior, mm. and um, we'd never spoken in between. We were just social media buddies, and she reached out, um, saying that uh, someone she knows is casting something for me too. And then I don't even think it was your project. I think it was something else, but oh, somehow wow. came around to you. I'm not sure. I just, so, from what I remember on my end is uh, people just kept saying, hey, uh, like, Jen came up to me. She's like, hey, I have this friend uh, that I want to bring in. And I told you this before, like, I just wasn't impressed by your headshot. So I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I was like, okay. They were pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, like, it was just, you know what? Because I, as I told you, like, you weren't, like, you weren't how I imagined Cindy. But I didn't know that At you all. were like, Cindy. I yeah. read the script, and yeah. it's like she has long yeah, hair. Long I'm hair, like, God damn it, long I hair freckles, it. glasses, and stuff like shit like that. Like that's how I pictured her because it was based off of a childhood. Duh. You know, yeah, right there. Duh. He's right there. So that's why when I saw that, I'm like, I know she's just trying to help out her actor friend. So I said, okay. I said, yeah, sure. So I said, let's bring her in. They brought you in, and uh, I just remember that. I like. I remember. I just like very. What's the word? Kind of like passively. Oh, and differently, just kind of like agreed to, really to like let you, yeah. to, like, to, to like let you come like, let, sure. Let's give this kid a like, chance. Let's give the kid a shot. And then I remember they come to me and they'd be like, okay, so Nizalda just auditioned. I'm like, who? And then they're like, my friend. <laughs> Dude, this is... I'm being, being honest. Wow. We're, being, we're being completely honest. Right. We're family. We're all this family. Is family. Well, it's, okay. it's, that, it's that kind of podcast. Yeah. Exactly. It's that kind we of podcast. Both have very different. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah, see facts. What I mean? yeah, that's facts, bro. Oh yeah, my you God. see what I mean? Oh, yeah. was it like that for you? No. <laughs> like, uh, no, it was tough. I just got here a week ago. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a funny parallel. But anyway, uh, yeah, so they showed, me her inter they showed me her audition. They said, if we get her... Um, that just means that we're not going to be able to put this on TV because of some SAG thing that you have. Um, and I just remember thinking, like, okay. I was like, whatever. <laughs> some, like, SAG thing. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not, yeah. Something that, that prevents me that, from allowing that, that really, SAG. That really made me look dumb in front of actors. <laughs> actors, sorry I'm not well-versed well in your SAG rules, yeah, but that, that thing. I knew it was a SAG thing. Your little, that your for little some, club. Your little, your little, your little baseball club. club. 
And so I just remember, like, I just remember there was just all these things. I was just like, why is everybody making a big deal about this person? And then, and then, <laughs> and then, and then I see, like, I see her fucking, I see her auditions, dude. And I actually do have that locked and loaded ready to go. Like, you no. have to see it. She, you don't want to watch it? I don't. But I want to watch it, dude. Oh, she, think, dude. There's a, I'll tell you, mom. There's a moment. There's a moment in the video where she just goes like, oh, "I'm Cindy Castro," and I was just like, "How? How did you do that?" I was like, "How? How did she become Cindy right before my eyes?" And I just remember, and I told you, this is the bold part of the story. I was watching on my the phone. The biopic moment. Yeah, the biopic moment. I'm looking at it, and I was just like, "What?" And I was just like, and I got up from my from my seat. I walked over because remember, me too had those like glass yeah, yeah, like yeah. off like see through offices yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And I went up to one of their business rooms and like I put my phone against. I said like I don't want to see anybody else. It's her. This is Cindy. Oh my god. And they were like, Chris, we still have to audition the rest of the girls we booked today. <laughs> like but 20 girls. like, but good to know that you like her. I'm like, okay. It's like this is the one, but <laughs> yeah. okay, I'll audition more. Yeah, we'll audition more. Wow. I appreciate that. Thank Let's whip it up. Let's what? do it. Now? Let's do it. Woo! Woo! Now, now that we actually, now that I actually have these things ready to go. Right. Do you have Emilio's too? Uh, I can pull it up. Yeah. Fuck yes. Gonzalde, Gonzalde. Yeah, dog. We're coming for Dang you too, bro. dude. We, did you know we were doing this? No. <laughs> this other Gonzalez crazy. Union. She loves the project. Nice. Ah. Ah, oh. here we are. Oh. Oh. That's the headshot God. you weren't impressed with? Yeah. yeah no, 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 it wasn't neither. that one. Me neither. <laughs> she is, yes, she is union. Oh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. God. You're so cute. Here we go. Here we go. Look at my cheeks. Look at her. Huge. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry, lady. I'm not trying to buy a dog right now. What? Oh, no, I'm not trying to sell anything. I found this pug trapped under the rose bush outside. No collar or anything. Sorry. Oh, this takes me back. Oh, that's it. I live here. That I was so right there. I live here. Like I was just like, ah, that's that's Cindy. Look at that. I like your you know that Hispanic hat. point, though. <laughs> I like your choice of hat. Thank you. I realize this is going to sound really random and weird, but do you think you could take care of her? Just for the day while I'm in class, I'll come right back. I promise. You did exactly the same on the show. That's fucking nuts. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Actor. Actor. Yeah, that's... That's your first one. Wow. That's cool. That was and, and, and literally I knew I knew you had like three other reads, but I was just like I'm fucking sold on this these. This is crazy. 100%. <laughs> so you saw that and you were like, boom. Like that's lit. I was sold. One. And someone said, just watch more of her, just so you're sure. Wow. Ew, and look at look at her Mowgli haircut. <laughs> Mowgli. Oh, Dude, this is she's doing the scene by the pool. By the I way, I was rebelling. <laughs> that hat really changes your face. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Amy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Wow. And our favorite parts of those movies were always the gifts the guys would give their girls. Pretty good. Yeah. How does it feel? Wait, 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 He's not on there. No? I, no, again, he was, he was super last minute. No, yeah. I, yeah. I, I shot that on I my phone. Yeah, it was on a phone. Yeah, I shot that on my phone. That. Where is it? Where is wow. It? We don't. No, oh my God. You can't, you can't do your own. It's some. It's it's, it's like somewhere. That. It's you know what? I'll, I'll pull it up. It's somewhere in the. It's somewhere in the archives though. That's crazy. So we won't see it, but it'll be. It, we're not gonna see it, but the audience will see it for sure. <sighs> you know, it's well, been my biggest fear to know that casting companies all over LA and maybe the world have these tapes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These archives of shitty auditions oh, where I've just bombed. I don't know about shitty. You got the. You got the job. That was pretty good. To you me. got the job, kid. But the ones you got the yeah, there was like a thousand oh. auditions before that. You have no idea. <laughs> and we made the weirdest choices, probably. Oh my god! Uh, oh yeah. And they're all in. They're all in yeah. the internet. Yeah. They're all oh, gonna yeah. resurface. Oh, yeah. one someone's, day. someone's probably doing the exact opposite, being like, "Bro, there's just the worst audition I've ever seen." Hold on, let me pull it up. And then they're like pulling up one of yours. Probably. Oh god. Yeah. Shit. Can't wait. That's gonna be fun. Thanks. But yeah, Thanks, that Angel. was. Yes. <laughs> So Angel, well, I'm curious. Why did why did you post them? off podcast? Thanks, Angel. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, Angel. What was uh what were what were you trying to like go with asking about before the before of Instant Crush? Um, I just always like knowing kind of like where someone was before they kind of like did this big moment in their lives. Like just to, cause like 
I like knowing that someone like this all day is like fucking like super struggling and like having like such a hard time with life and then fucking just fate brings people together to make something super dope and yeah. I think hearing that is like super important for people that are just like fuck man I can't catch a break it's like sometimes shit just comes a week before it's meant to you know definitely yeah so, for sure it's a little, little lesson for everybody out there, for the kids, you know? Just it chill. Is. Yeah, Just ins- Instant Crush was such a was such a weird one. I t- uh, this is the last... I, th- I, th- I'm going to officially say, like, this is the last I'm ever going to talk about this, but... Nah. Like, nah. Like, <laughs> on, 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 nah. on, on the air. I will. Yeah. I, I will. It ends here. But, we'll see. But, but, like, I told you, like, right before, like, I had... We had one of, like, the bigger, like, official production meetings of Instant Crush. Like, that's when I got, like, the final text. Like, nailing the coffin of the end of that, like, last relationship. And it oh, was... Oh, yeah, you did tell me that. It was right before, like, literally the week it happened, I was supposed to turn in my first drafts, and I was in so much pain. I was telling this story to to my new girlfriend, actually, t- uh, the other day. Woo-hoo! Uh, How tight I was <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. Uh, we, I was, didn't even know. Oh, you yeah. know? I thought... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you know. No, I, t- I told you. No, you didn't I, say it was dude, like I straight up called Melia. I was like, bro, I had sex for the first time. <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not for the whoa. first time, but for the first time in a long For the first time. Chris and I have a very forever. close relationship. But just because you and call I'm me nice. and you say that you have sex <laughs> with an true, individual that didn't, I didn't look, automatically. Right, you're 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 right. But that's right. awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Man. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. so glad I did. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't call me all that. Yeah, right. oh, no, well, <laughs> no, yeah, I was recounting just how, like, I really had to, like, I, because Jose, shout out Jose. Oscar's boyfriend, Jose. Jose, we were, we were having a drive, and he was asking me, when do you feel like you, you create your best work? And I said, for sure, when I'm happy. But I said, the, the exception to that is right before Instant Crush, like, that was when, like, the breakup had just happened. And I was just at the end of everything, and I w- had so much running through my mind. It's almost to the point where I wanted to just email me to him and be like, you know what? I don't want to do this show anymore. Shit. And I was like, no, I can't blow this opportunity like that. And so I remember I had to spend the whole day. Like, I opened up all the blinds in my house, and I just forced myself to revisit, even though, like, these memories were were pulled from, like, specific moments of that relationship. And, like, I had to craft this new this new draft of Instant Crush. And I was just... I remember it was such a long day and I would I would like take breaks in between to go like puke or cry or something. Oof. And then at the end of it when I finished it I you know I I did my revisions and at the end I remember I just like sobbed and I like went to sleep like that just cuz it took so much out of me and I was just so exhausted by the end of it. And it it, it it's nice to know that I don't know like it uh, when I watch it now it's just like it you, like to me I'm glad that I can't even tell that I was at all really sad during mm. that time. Like I, I, I completely let myself live in the world. I'm like, you know what? Right now, this is this whole set is a place of like love and, and friendship, and I just want to celebrate that. I was like, and when I was there, like we were just talking about this in the car. Like we're just in the moment, you know? Yeah, bro. We're just, and you didn't even smoke back then. Not really, no. <laughs> no. I know. Yeah. You, you do. <laughs> I remember one of the first times me and Emilio hung out just to talk about the character. He's all like rolling a joint. He's like, uh, you want some of this, bro? And I wasn't um, a stoner yet. And I was just like, Emilio I was like, no, rolls. thanks. There was, there was definitely some judgment. <laughs> there. there was like, no, no, no. I'm a super up and coming director. <laughs> all I do is watch movies and write scripts. I don't I don't waste my time and dabble in that. I think uh, I, like, I think weed in movies is uh, completely overrated. In fact, I create my own drugs. You remember yeah. I told you that? I had yeah, that yeah. conversation yeah. with yeah. you. Yeah, like, no, yeah. He, he said that exact same That's thing. That's why Spank is in Gage Bull. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you meant. I thought you said it like as a, like a fucking pretentious thing. I create my own drugs. Like, no, yeah, in like, life, like you know. Oh no 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 no. I get high on life. No no no. <laughs> that's that's no that's absolutely pretentious. <laughs> but no, I didn't. Yeah, that was that was my life back then, and that's why. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool now that like like yeah, we're all completely now, different from those forward, people. To fucking now. Yeah. Do you feel all three of you? Do you feel? Like Instant Crush got the recognition that it deserved. <laughs> um. Yeah, we'll start with you, Chris. No, I was gonna say I think I'd like to hear from the actors first, because uh, we I think we all have different opinions. I, I'll, I'll I'll say you know what? No, you take it. <laughs> I was like, um, no, you take it. I um, think there's all no, that. No, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The guys, the guys have been talking a lot. That's like, true. Like, that's true. Yes. Go ahead, well, I, I, um. No. <laughs> Hell no. No. Um, I, I agree. I no disrespect to any distribution that it did get. 
and thank you to everyone that watched and supported and maybe there are people that are still finding it and hopefully binging it now. Yeah, and hopefully great. discover it through this podcast. Yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a slow burn. You know, sometimes like uh, you put something out and then it takes a little bit of time to find some traction or for the right person to see it and put mm -hmm. it on a bigger platform. So it's not to say that it's it's def definitely done and it didn't get the recognition it deserved. But I, I definitely think there are so many more people that need to see it. I think it could yeah. definitely do with a, a wider audience and a bigger platform because it's such yep. a relatable story. It's real. And I'm not just agreeing just because uh, because it's my That's thing. Right. That's right. No, honestly, there was a, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. There was a point where I was completely and I'll, I'll confess this like on here like I was completely embarrassed of Instant Crush for a very long time, and it was because it was because of those diner scenes we shot. Oh yeah. I was com like so for for like low key people will know that there were some diner scenes we had shot. Um, that were supposed to be, you were supposed to see Cindy and Andy in the future talking about them in the, in the past when they were young. And that's just not what the show is. It's just their memories in real time. But yeah, I, I hated that stuff so much and I was completely embarrassed and I thought like, fuck, like I super fucked up like my one big chance to, to wow people with, with, with what I can do. But then I realized when I nixed those scenes, the fucking show was great on its own and it played just so like it was just short and sweet like before it was a little meteor there was a lot more there's like a whole other episode like an episode mm -hmm. zero of just them in the future talking about hey so what the hell happened and there's like a whole fight between them and angel seen that first rough cut we saw that first rough cut before we shot our first episode of the podcast yeah, remember I remember that you, i remember you were so excited to just show anybody you showed me and brandon yeah i was like cool Whoa. but yeah i was completely embarrassed of just like how i had covered the rest of it that first episode was fine but i think there was just things where I was like, ah, this looks so amateur. But I'm like, but the rest of this like was great. Like like the way we filmed it just freehand like that. And um I, I even convinced like the producer, I said, Can we just like just make it that? I said, I kinda don't care for the And it and you know what? It had only gotten easier to do that because there was a lot of downsizing at the company anyway. So like at oh, this point yeah. they just want they just wanted to put it out. They just wanted to put it out. So they're like, do whatever you want to do. And yeah. so I'm gr I'm grateful that at least I got that freedom, and that's why I think people got to see it because like not only did we get to have our way and make the show like as best as it possibly can be, but like you're missing some of the most iconic '90s level you know rom com like peak performances, but like transcending that into like just grounded brown realism. It's so beautiful, and mm. I I think your performances really like elevated the material itself because when I read the script I think it's fine but it was what you two had brought to it and the fact that they had met each other that first time like <laughs> like with bad labor like they just met each other on set they're like hi I guess we're in love <laughs> yeah I guess that's what we're doing today uh, <laughs> the one thing I the, the one thing I just want to just quickly say and add on uh, I mean first and foremost I, I completely agree I think that one, it's a slow burn. I think that you never know, you know, especially with the internet things being, you know, uploaded. They're there for quite some time, mm -hmm. if not forever. Um, and uh, the second thing I want to say is that you're right. You know, brown realism, I think it is an important, it's a very important story. It's a very important narrative and light and tone and aesthetic that we don't ever rarely get to see in film and media. Uh, but the, the thing that I want to just cap all that with is when you make really profound and exciting and refreshing and honest, authentic work like Instant Crush is because it comes from your heart and it's filmed in this community. To be frank, when I work in a situation like that, personally speaking, I don't care what the reception is. I don't care what the outcome is, how much clout, how much recognition, whatever, festival circuits, distribution. It doesn't matter because what, not to be, you know, super corny, but what really matters is the experience. And I got to work with an incredible young director. I got to make, you know, friends and family that, that I think and hope I will have, you know, for the rest of my life here in this realm. So at the end of the day, yes, of course. I hope yeah. so many more people see it. I hope it gets a resurgence. I hope the fans end up asking for the, the Snyder cut and they're like, no, Chris, we need the... <laughs> we need the episode two. Yeah, 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 you never know. Nizalda is actually the only one that has it. Really? You she has it, it for her real. You use it for the real? Yeah. She has it. Some, some cool I mean, it's, it's in the email, but yes. I will yeah. use it, yeah. yeah. It's that. in the email. So but at she's the end of the day, if you're, making, <laughs> if you're making really special work, it doesn't matter 
what happens with it because you can always have it and always have those relationships and always have those memories. I would love to piggyback just so we can kind of like. Well, I'm, I'm about to move on. Oh yeah, yeah, like, but just like I, I completely agree. It's, it's, but it's pretty. I got something to say. It's pretty much like how we, we've, we've, we've talked about. You've asked me that question before. Like, do I feel like a guy? I'm like, no, but just like with bad labor, just like with with our show, even just like with this, I'm like, I know, and I'm, I, I'm completely fine with these things not blowing up to their peak now because honestly, if it, if it, I, I would be kind of sad if if all the greatness of Instant Crush literally happened a few months ago. To know that, like, at some point in my life when I don't even realize it, there's going to be a resurgence, then finally we get to do the movie, and fucking people are quoting bad labor at me, like, fucking all these years later, when they finally... I know that cult things take a process, and I came in admiring cult status artists, and so I'm fine with... I, I, I know that that's part of the journey. The is, work will be recognized. At some eventually. point, at the, at the moment, it's all just about laying the groundwork so that way... When, you, when you're taking longer breaks in between doing creative projects, people have an arsenal of stuff for you to fucking dive into. That's true. Well, both of you mentioned how these roles and this project was like special to you in different ways. I guess, what, what does that mean for you? Like, what does a special role mean? What is a, what is a, like, what do these roles mean to you? Like, what about them was different than like things you've done before, things you've done since, I guess? Like, what stuck with you about, about what you did? A bunch of brown people. Yes. A bunch of brown people you know couldn't what? tell me nothing. It's all of us, bro. Yeah, it's all of us. No, for real, that was so crazy. Instant Crush was one of the first experiences I've ever had where not only everyone on set was, like, very, you know, young and talented and, you know, smiling, Oh, yeah. Cool but set. everybody was, you know, was either a woman or a person of color. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. was so exciting, so refreshing. It was, like, it was almost, you know, it was jarring how... Uh, unnatural it sort of felt of like what i never get to work in this environment how 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 like that that's that's what makes project special yeah our, our gaffer and uh a camera camera op assistant uh maddie and um we had, we had like two ladies yeah. on two ladies behind the camera helping us three ladies we had they eviana oh. you yeah. know eviana like yeah. evie taking like uh, fucking evie. Evie, sh evie shout out maddie. yeah she was doing yeah. the slate we had maddie we had michaela yeah. helping out uh, michaela was gaffer maddie was helping with camera yeah yeah dude it was just like there were and then you know louis doing the 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 production design which yeah. i love for that yeah, show by the absolutely. way and it was her idea to put the bad labor poster yeah. in the background and then jen doing costumes jen costumes Tiffy makeup They've exactly it was such it was such yeah. a it was such a, a a safe set very yeah. very loving yeah. all around absolutely yeah and it also dude it started uh you know it started with you with you chris just being the leader of that and you really set the tone i didn't Thank know you. you too well personally while making instant crush mm -hmm. so i didn't know that you were going through all this hurt, I knew that it was based off a true story, but I didn't know that you were, you know, trying to, you know, work it out through yourself. Not that you were putting on any sort of mask, because while on set, you were so positive and such a natural leader and just never stressed out or anything. And, and I think, you know, when, when someone at the top sets that tone, you know, it really, really resonates and trickles down to everybody else. And all of a sudden, this smaller independent project, you have people pulling their own weight and then some because yeah. they have such a such a fearless leader a, such a compassionate you know leader at, at the at the forefront of it all and it really happened when we got to the apartments where it really just felt like everybody was yeah. like all right this is we're, we're on this Gung pirate ship we're now doing yeah, we're all it doing yeah it. Absolutely. i just remember everybody would watch in awe when nizalba and amelia would just run their scenes like like there was the one where where he's like hey you're gonna go walking alone um and when we were watching them rehearse, I just remember seeing Michaela and just like everyone just like watching like the back <laughs> and forth. And it was so everybody was just so hypnotized by it. It was a fun set to be on uh, for sure. Yeah, I can definitely say that I also I agree with what he said. I mean, I appreciate how um, enthusiastic you were through and through. And I think Thank a lot you. of that um, spunk is what made a lot of it happen. I, you know, the same way that you were not technically supposed to, but you did give him the job on the spot. Thank you for doing the same to me. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very uh -oh. easy director to audition for. He yeah. just gives you the fucking role on the turns spot. Out. <laughs> turns out. Turns out. She's not like, that not that my experience. <laughs> <laughs> no. But um, yeah, I think a lot of that, um, that enthusiasm and the tenacity that you have is very clearly translated on set. With the Thanks. people that you know came on, yeah, and it needed to be that. Otherwise, like it just, it would have just been a waste of everybody's time. Yeah. I had to, I had to be happy. So, so why great. the fuck aren't there more instant crushes? Like, why is that so rare to have something as simple as 
uh, Latino people and women like helping you create something? Why the fuck is that so hard to do? I don't get it. You know what? Like I, I, I I'll, I'll quickly say because I do want you. I, I do want everybody's take on this. But I really think, and somebody pretty much told me, you know how I feel about the word luck. But okay. I, I do kind of agree. I really think we got super lucky because so much was happening at Me Too that. Had it been under their full control, like had we gotten that big ass instant crush rollout that we were all promised from like the beginning when we were talking about it's gonna have this, it's gonna we're gonna try to pitch it to all these big companies, like I would have been very unhappy with that final product because I'm for sure they would have wanted that diner stuff in there mm-hmm. and just to build that world and 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 all the situations that again affected real lives and it was a lot of losses were were had during the process of this, but I think because of that. Instant Crush kind of was like the um, the diamond in the rough of all of it, because it could have easily been not great. I I think if I'm if I'm being honest, but it was because of all that was going on, all that went wrong, wrong, toppled by the fact that it was me and Asham, shout out uh, Asham, who were pretty much working on the pretty much finishing this project on our own. Um, it it was really born out of circumstance, but. The show was always designed to be like that, but it is, I don't know, it is, it is tricky that it had, like, it had to go through all that stuff just to come out in the best way possible. I, mean, I think that's why that good movies are kind of life. rare. Yeah, yeah like, you, you kind of don't know yeah. what to expect. You can only go in with the best intentions, and then whatever happens afterwards was whatever's going to happen afterwards. I really learned that on Instant Crush. Like, this could be really good or really bad. Thank God it's really good. Fuck yes. <laughs> but would you, I, I don't know, would you, what's your takeaway from all of it? The takeaway? I mean, yeah, what was the question, Chris? Yeah, no, I, I think I want to. I'm curious about your experience. I mean, because he was asking, Angel was asking, like, is why is it so hard? Like, yeah. Why is it so hard to get these stars aligning? And I'm really curious on what it's like, you know, from not only the the female perspective, but the you know the Latina, the brown female perspective. Mm-hmm. What's it like out there in the trenches, Nisada? <laughs> Break it down. Popping. <laughs> Well, I, there are so many different categories, and there's so many ways to answer that question, and it just depends how personal we want to get. Um, I, I don't know. I, I can only speak from my experience. I've found myself in audition rooms that are calling in a Hispanic young female, and I go in the room, and it's great because I'm like, cool, they want brown people. And then even, even then, I, I feel like... Um, the I don't want to offend anybody here. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Um, a lot of the girls in the room with me uh, look white, so I don't I don't know. And this is where I'm so offended by that. No, I feel, because who are you going to well, I be it's a, it's sensitive. <laughs> it's it's like uh, it's I don't want to. I don't think the color of anyone's skin takes away from no, how brown they are. I, I Does that make sense? Big, I think that's a big issue. Um, though. But I, I think that Hollywood wants, like, okay, yeah, let, let's let's uh, let's be more inclusive. Let's, you know, have, let's show more representation on screen. But then, you know, the the Latina looks white, and uh, mm. they get like a, a lighter skinned black person, and then all of a sudden mm. you have this like whitewashed cast mm. and um and again the reason i was really um hesitant to say it that way is because i would never ever want to uh take away from someone's um ethnicity or their pride or their culture or their heritage yeah. whatever just because they came out lighter my sister is super light skin you know we just we look different but we're just as brown as each other inside uh, culturally, so that's why I was really uh, no, no, walking I, on eggshells I, I answering totally, that. I totally but get just that. I'm what I'm speaking from my personal experience. Yeah, no, and that's like that's why we, we want to know because exactly. it's, it's such an important so, conversation to be had. I think. Um, yeah, and that's what kind of that's what I see in the room, and then what I see after the fact uh, is um, personal experience. Again, I go in for a feature, I knock it out of the park, and I can. It's very rare that I can say that about something because I, I'm so hard on myself. But when I feel good about something, I felt good. And then I get called back. Awesome. Chemistry read. I'm the only girl here. Oh, my God. Email. We went another way. Okay, cool. Mm. Movie comes out a year later. It's a white girl. Mm. All right, cool. So it's like, why, what is it? Why, why is it so difficult? I'm asking myself the same question. I don't know how to answer it because I'm in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm part of it. Um, so it's like, how, how do you answer a question when you are the question? I don't know. Like, I, 
I'm the, I feel like I'm still battling it every day. <laughs> Dang, that was super. Deep. That, <laughs> that, that last, that last. You time, really? How do you answer I think you're gonna. You I think you're gonna give us a Peabody Award. That was fucking awesome. That was crazy. <laughs> God damn. No, but yeah, yeah it's it's poignant. Started. But that's I mean, but that's honestly, and I could be real with you too. Like, yeah, I didn't imagine Cindy to look like you, but you were, and I I respected that. Like you were Cindy, even though it wasn't exactly to my imagination, and it was like the best fucking choice I could have ever made. And I think more people got to be in tune with it. like it's not about what you're used to seeing; it's about what like just like what if, if they can embody the character exactly. It's and that's you. why I'm that's, so appreciative yeah. of, of how everything worked out and how you work, because like he said or you said or everyone has said so far if this were a, a like a way bigger caliber if this were like going through execs and you didn't have the freedom to say you got the role yeah. like on the spot That's if true. this had to go through so many That's big true. heads and then end up on like some random person's table that probably hasn't even seen my tape they see mm. my headshot and they're like no i don't know how that works i can't i'm not saying that that's exactly how it goes but to meet someone like yourself that truly believes in performance and that alone carrying a project i appreciate that because that's the yeah, only thing i have right now yeah i don't come from connections i don't come from money i don't come from any of that so it's like thank you that's really yeah, cool. you yeah. fucking spoiled ass motherfuckers <laughs> motherfuckers that come from fucking connected ass parents fuck you fuck you that's oh this all not me i didn't, <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that either that's <laughs> <laughs> not me speaking that's all that no yeah. no <laughs> I, I no I, yeah I, it, it's so weird that you that's a good point that it, because it didn't go through too many people that's how we got to make instant crush as best as we could because we knew what we wanted to see and we are the audience and it it was it was a lot easier to have influence creatively on this than like if this went to a bigger company so it could it could have like i said this could have easily not went the, that right that right mm -hmm. way Amelia, what the fuck why isn't there more instant crushes <laughs> Why isn't there more instant crushes? Um, Why isn't there more roles for you? Because no, I think I think just on that note, piggybacking on on what what Chris and Isadora were saying. Um, I mean, first and foremost, like as a, as a community, uh, I think we got to stop, uh, you know, having this pissing contest of like who is more Latino than than the other. Oh, you're yeah. you're not brown enough. You're not this enough. And, uh, and and we got to stop tearing each other down and start unifying. And I think part of the reason why maybe this is all hypothetical i have no idea but like part of the reason why you know these casting offices are struggling to get a more mixed you know variety of 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 actors um from the latino community is because we need to start making content like instant crush to show that we come in so many different shapes and sizes and backgrounds and languages and voices that there is such a variety to what it means to be a latino or latinx whatever we're going with um uh, because that's because i i face you know sort of the the opposite sometimes of going into you know roles that are you know bigger production roles in hollywood that are looking specifically for latinos and I don't think that I fit the mold that Hollywood has, and I don't think you fit the mold that Hollywood. You know what I mean? So I we have to break. Don't. We have to I break don't. break those stereotypes and break those um, preconceived, you know, ideas and notions of what oh a Latino looks like this and sounds like this. And it's like no, dude, that, that's the whole definition of how this word Latino even came to be. It's like an, it's a it's an entirety. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I think I think. Well, are you gonna? Say I was gonna say. Another thing you told me too that really that really resonated with me. We were sitting right over there when we had to do some of our instant crush reshoots, mm -hmm. and you told me two things that really stuck with me. For one, you said like, dude, like when you're watching, like this is fucking beautiful. You said like, thank you for this. You're like, I have this forever. You're like, I like I can always look I can always look back at this moment in my life and when I shot this, like this is fucking yeah. awesome. He's like, and he's like, up until this point, he's like, all I've been playing was jocks. He's like, you just let me play a guy. He's yeah. like, that was cool. He's like, thanks for that. Like, yeah. I, I have not had the chance to just play a goofy, like, just yeah. a guy. He's yeah, like, that's, that's me. Yeah. Yeah, that I was agree. Cool. Per perfect lead-in. I was going to say, there's probably so many layers to each of your identities that you feel, like, is tied to your Latino identity that you don't get to see. Like, you probably don't, no, you wouldn't guess it by looking at Emilio, but he's a fucking huge nerd. 
<laughs> like we connected over anime like right God. away dang i was like you fucking are. anime dog. <laughs> absolutely no it's true i just I'm, I'm i'm so caught by surprise at this whole podcast i'm like oh man we're bringing up old audition tapes oh man we're bringing up anime tendencies uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> we're really pole. taking all the oh skeletons out of the closet uh, yeah, yeah okay. man Nizalda's a fucking skating ass, cool uh, yeah. ass person. I'm not Ooh. cool, man. She's I've seen so your skating cool. videos. She's very clumsy. She's pretty cool. I'm cool. She's, she's oh my god, clumsy. can we take a break? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of myself for not getting hurt today. You didn't. But it's because I didn't do anything. <laughs> every well, time, go. every single time I've had a meeting, um, a shoot, or anything with Chris, I've gotten hurt. Always. <laughs> she That's always gets her. She's like, like, dude, check out this cut on oh my, my knee God. every time. <laughs> I don't gnarly. say it like that. Check out this. She's gnarly, bro. <laughs> I don't even say that word. I'm from the East Coast. <laughs> what, do, what do East Coasters say? Um, I don't really speak in lingo, gnarly, to be honest. Bro. Gnarly, but bro. Like, aren't you supposed to be getting better? If you skate all the time, why are you still getting hurt? Or is that just part of? I think that's bro, the nature you know what? of it. Right? This is this is the beauty of skateboarding. You will never be the best. There's always something to learn. There's always and actually, even when you learn something in a week, you might not have that trick anymore, and you got to relearn it. What? Yeah. It just goes away. Those are life lessons. Yeah. Skate lessons are life yeah. lessons. Yeah. It's a metaphor for life. It Every, really is. Everything you do is so philosophical. It's so like so that's the life she leads. So profound. Yeah. Like you took skateboarding and you were like. Here's the nature of skating. <laughs> Ask any skater though, like even even I've talked most, to like skaters you before. walk up to someone that like can't open their eyes and they're like that was gnarly, but like they will tell you something really deeply profound that they have learned from skateboarding. You're like you have to look beyond what they're saying into what they're really saying. <laughs> when someone says that's gnarly, bro, <laughs> think about actually, what that means. Yeah. Think about they're, that. What they're actually saying. No, but really, it's just it's it's the idea of trying something over and over again, something very difficult, something maybe not. Not fun in the beginning because you suck at it something that a lot of people are afraid to do and yeah. then you finally get it and it's like oh shit cool it's beautiful i think that's a good place to take a break let's do it that's that was really beautiful. profound we'll we'll, leave Nisalda, there. we'll be back with more with more <laughs> philosophy <laughs> with nasalda <laughs> you know what i've always wanted i love it sticks Go on without me. I'm gonna go for a walk with Cindy. Have fun, one, guys. We're gonna get it though. Sick. All right. So we found, <laughs> we found it. We fucking we found, found the fucking video. The video that look, did it all. Look how excited Emilio is. This is what. <laughs> This is his so, what started it all. This is his shining moment. This We're about is to not watch. The start of my career. <laughs> I'm not even Don't thinking. say that. I, let's read. Like <laughs> we can we can talk as we too. watch this, but literally. <laughs> I just remember watching this and thinking, like, this is the guy. Like, he looks like me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just because just I looked at you or because I'm acting like an Well, no, because, well, I mean, you weren't acting. Dangus. So I, I knew I had to be like, oh, okay, well, he for sure has the vibe. <laughs> Let's see if he can act it. That was the point of the audition. Acting. But all right, go ahead. Well, you, 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 you sold this me. This is not real. This is happening. Oh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's rewind it. Yes. In Los Angeles at Dodger Stadium uh, for the World Series Game 2, and I'm about to go on a blind date. Best Ooh. case scenario, you this star chick from? is someone that my mom can like. Worst thing that can happen is... <laughs> were you trying to bob like the bubble head? <laughs> Dude, no cap. Dude, no cap. I, I saw her at ArcLight when I was working there. I was gonna say hi, but I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna meet my boy date. Astros are gonna win. Oh, Astros for sure. She is really an Astros fan. Yeah. Um, but you are also a Dodgers fan. Right? Look at look at Emilio's. I mean, look at you go. Hey. Emilio, dude, and you know what? I didn't. I told you right. They 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 interviewed her for Instant Crush. She was one of the people that I I, I saw that I read with. One of the first people I read with oh, for Instant Crush. So it could have been. It could have been, been a reunion. That would have been really cute. Oh, <laughs> it's just like. That would have yeah. been cute though. Ah, uh, look at him. Look at him. Look at him living life, cutie pie. This is great. Sick soundtrack, bro. Like he was the prototype for Instant Crush, and he realized. 
And can you believe, can you believe, look how perfect, like, Emilio, like, this is just so Andy. And people, like, were, the people, I won't name names, but the people in charge were just like, really? Him? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? The one guy, the yeah. one guy I'm saying yes to, you're questioning. Like, no, I don't know, <laughs> I don't one see guy. it. How do you not see it? Look at him. Dude, that looks like Chris. It looks like me. It's perfect. <laughs> Chris loves dogs. Fuck you. It's funny because this is Fuck Andy. You. Like, Fuck you are Andy and this guy are the same. Like, this is Andy when he's much older. You can get the sequel right here, y'all. Hey, 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 <laughs> There's a... Uh-huh. Did you have wow. to look up the lyrics to that song? No, I, I, <laughs> I definitely, on that definitely need a word to that song. <laughs> Thank you. So she had to wear Dodger gear. Oh. oh, shit. Conflict. Are you happy about that? I don't feel bad for her at Aww. all. Aww, so cute. <laughs> she took it off. She's like, go Astros. Astros hit her home run, tied it up. You think they rigged the game? The Maybe. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> There's no way. Production value is huge. Damn, what the fuck? <laughs> she said, no, I'm a lady. <laughs> Dude, look at him. That's a star right there. You have to be stupid not to see that. You stupid. Nine at You know who you are. You stupid. Shit. Damn, look at why they cut him off? <laughs> he's like Mike Wazowski. <laughs> <laughs> or Spongebob when he's in the commercial. What was this? Jim like, meme. Dude, I hate people that wear their hats like that. <laughs> what, they don't, they don't got that little kid spunk? Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Shh, shh, shh. <gasps> they can get the white rose? Walk off together. If not, go your separate ways. Let's sum this up. Uh, um, I'm gonna walk up that way. Okay. Wanna join? Sure. Aww, uh, that little uh, wanna join? Uh, <laughs> how could you not say that? Wow. No, we have to do something else next time. Yeah, they set their differences aside. Yeah. It's, it's an algorithm for life, and that yeah, was the deciding okay. factor. That's physically. Beautiful. Physically sweating. Like, I'm, I'm so. Dude, he is wild. Like, Don't Dude, feel so good, does Man, that, so that is cringy. See how that, feels? that is so cringy. <laughs> but you see, I I get like that when I see like old films that I do. I'm just like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You know who doesn't get like that? <laughs> but the, really? Why are you Why you are you assigning that lane? to me? <laughs> No, I, I, I like it. There's a there's an obvious trajectory. I like that it's always the 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 most current thing is always better than the last. So so what's something you you have a reaction to that Amelia just said? Like something that you cringe at watching of yours. My fucking Doritos commercial, dude. That's like the worst thing I've ever made. Doritos? Let's do it. Doritos commercial. Oh, Doritos. Here we go. Is it Doritos? Chris did a Doritos commercial? Hang on, let me Yeah, that'd be real crazy if he did a Dreidel. A dreidel oh, commercial? I was like, it's awfully random, but okay. Maybe it's yeah, I did like a... Chris got really into dreidels for a little bit. I need to move. Fuck them people! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that alright? What? I don't know what that was. That was great. That was Chris's Doritos commercial. <laughs> Fuck the people! Yeah, you see why I have a problem with it? That's why it was no. the worst one. <laughs> Man, he's like, yeah. Now you know what? Now you know what? I'll, I'll, so... I'll, I'll, I'll play you something that's actually in, enjoyable to watch. Is the Doritos? No, I, I actually consider this like this is bad. This, this is cringy for me because I'm in this okay. and I'm trying to act, and it's not good. <laughs> Here we are. Awesome. The that's... ultimate mouthwash Ooh, is the name of this. Now we can video. watch Chris's acting. It's from 2011. Yeah, dude, I was making videos even back then. You can give him some notes. My old friend. <laughs> are you not friends anymore? Oh man, we're not. You could have done without that detail. I know. Dude, that's I fucking know hilarious. Who this was. My old friend. <laughs> that's my old friend. Next, we're gonna watch Chris react to Two Girls One Cup." 
I have that video. You know what? I'll play that. Dude, I have a lot of <laughs> videos the, of me. I have a lot of videos of me. I think that's me. the good one. Yeah, that's, like, that's, a, that's a perfect one, Angel. You're a fucking genius. Thank you. I'll sit that one out. Hey, you don't, you don't no, see you don't it. see it. You don't it's see just it. a reaction. Yeah, it's I'm, a reaction. I'm just reacting. Oh, okay. So imagine little Chris reacting to two girls, one cup. Yeah, and that's a real video online. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so you know what? We... It, we, we thought it would be the, the Doritos commercial. We thought it would be Ultimate Mouthwash. But it's not. third time's a charm. We found... And three's my lucky number. Oh, and we found the video. All right. Took, this is the first video on my YouTube channel. Six oh years God, ago. Oh, God, we're really doing this. Two wow. girls, one cup. And I uploaded it six years, years ago. This is actually made in 2010. All the way back then. Here we go. Right next to Chris's Bruno right. Mars. Cookie. And then there, there's my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> over there. Yes, again. My <laughs> old friend. <laughs> there, Floyd, you look the same. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Fourteen. Oh Please God. 15. And we're gonna watch two girls on cup for the very so first time. Why are you being so heavy? Well, trying to make a point here, you know. Shut up, bitch. Right, here we go. <laughs> All right. Oh God. Put the in there. Dude, I just really wanted to clown this food. <laughs> <laughs> just I don't know where to look for the shield. I want to hear like me too. Oh my oh. God. Look, this is the best part of it right here. Look. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like gagging. So I'm, yeah, we're just not, we're having an awfully visceral reaction to this. It's, no, we're not winning. Did you say stink up? I said stink up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I dragged him in his face, dude. <laughs> Who wouldn't run away? <laughs> no! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> that, that shit killed me. He's, he like threw up in that cooler. <laughs> take this shit off, take this shit off! How do you take this shit off? Oh my god. So after that okay, so then I'm just saying we're gonna try it again. <laughs> we're just gonna go to the first one out. Okay, right here. Ah, busted! Busted! Oh no, just wait, wait till the end. God, I can't see this again. Shut up, bitch! I can't see this again. Watch this. He's like not even reacting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is when they're like doing it to their teeth, like the caca. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, Chris! Chris! Chris, Jeez. the commitment! My mom walks in at the What's end. What's going on, Chris? What's going on, Chris? And the mom's just puking uh, on the floor. Yeah. There you go. Did yeah. she know? No. So we said we were wrestling. Okay. okay. Well, so wait. that's... <laughs> that's... <laughs> so y'all just came back from uh, watching little baby 14-year-old yeah, yeah, Chris... 14-year-old me. ...force himself to throw up <laughs> in front of his friends and his family. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. And it wasn't even like vomit. It was like spittle. It was yeah, it was just spittle. Yeah. It was just... A lot of dry heaving. Bubba. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when that video was pretty big. Yeah, me too. What were we going to ask us? Like, oh, we... <laughs> I remember uh, I, I wanted to ask. Well, we were just talking about watching other people's auditions for the roles that these two got. And then, and then, and then I asked Chris, what about their auditions did they capture that the other people didn't? Damn, these people are dying. Look at them. Hey, what's so funny? Hey, what's so goddamn funny? <laughs> I'm laughing at your cough, <laughs> I know, hold it together. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, so, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. This podcast is falling apart. I guess it's good oh, at falling man. apart. Honestly, honestly I knew I was going to have fun. I didn't think I was going to be laughing it. this hard. Dude, that was straight. Man. That was straight. That was straight slapstick. Anyway. Like, I'm dying. <laughs> and then we look at the camera. Oh, no. 
you wanted you were asking me what what about Emilio and Azalda stood out? Um, Emilio was a real person and Azalda was a real person. Nobody was acting. <laughs> no, that's what it was. No, like they were they, they were breathing human beings with a pulse. Oh. And that was it. That was all I that was all I needed. He looked like me, so he had a bit of a he bit of an advantage. That's why it was an easier choice. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course, no. Like, but they played it s- just so straight. There was no, uh, there's no what I like to call Disney Channel acting. Mm. You know, like that over overdoing it. And there were a lot of great, also just like act- actors in there too that playing, you know, auditioning for Cindy and, and 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 Andy and everybody. But I think at the end of the day, it ultimately just came down to like, who do I remember the most? Like, who felt like. Like my homie, because a lot of them were based off my homie. Shout out to Brian Arion, shout out to Jeremy Faya, who were also in the the the, the series. Bo Smart, Casper, every, every dude, literally, it never fails. Every time I show that first episode of Instant Crush, and fucking Casper comes out, everyone's like, "Is that Casper?" It's always, "Is that Casper? Is that yeah. Jalen's ex-boyfriend?" My mom asked. <laughs> <laughs> my mom too. She's like, "That's Casper." I'm like, how do you know who Casper is? I don't know, but. They, they were, they, he felt the closest to what I wanted to see in Andy, you know. Uh, I said a John, I, I was saying like if I had to compare him to anyone back then that I could think of that was closely related in cinema was John Favreau and Swingers. Just kind of like that nervous, you know, uh, he's like, you know, he's, he's okay looking, but he's not, he's not that good looking. Which <laughs> Emilio, which Emilio completely like he's was. Okay looking. He's okay looking. He's fine. I think John Favreau's hot. Right? <laughs> I think he I thought he was okay in that movie. In but you know, but it was like it was like yeah, he could be our lead, and I I just you just feel closer to him because he's not like his troubles make sense to him. Like the the things he deals like yeah, of course he would be he would be that bad ex in a in a breakup. Like he just seems like that guy. It would I would not believe it if it was you know beautiful ass 1990s Vince Vaughn. You know like it's. They everybody just fit the role so well to the point where it was not it was not even like I was casting the role. She's like, oh hey Andy, nice That's to meet you. you. Yeah, there you are. I finally know what you look like. Mm. It's like trying on different glasses auditioning. For Nizalda too. Yeah. Could, well, and Nizal just like <laughs> right away. <laughs> <laughs> I have that story, yeah. Nizalda. Yeah. No, and I was gonna say, and I was gonna say, oh, this is the point I want to make. This is the point I want to make. It was easier for for Emilio. Yeah. And, no, no, no. It was a quick. Wait, what was okay? Yeah, Emilio had the the better time, I would say, and Nizalda, you went through a little bit more emotions. But during the shooting, like I told you, I had to talk to you less, and it was me and Emilio that were really trying to find. Yeah. Find, like I just you remember know, we I kept took that personally. And and I pulled you aside for that. Do you remember what I told you? Do you remember? I because you were you were like you're just like not like I just remember like I was just like noticing I would only go to to Emilio yeah. for for notes, and you were just like standing around, and then I said. I remember it was right before we did the pool scene. I said, hey, I said, I hope you know, like, um, yeah. you're fucking nailing it. Like, I don't, like, regardless, I, um, not regardless. Uh, there'll be, if there's an adjustment, I'll make it. And I have, I'm like, but otherwise you're like, okay. like, you know what yeah. you're doing. I but really I, know. I, I know with Emilio, like, it was, I, I had to find, I had to find a, a good middle ground because I wanted Emilio to be too much like me. But that was, I didn't realize that that was gonna, just going to limit his performance. So that's why we both, it was especially during the diner scene where we were like really like finding it. And then by the time we had gotten to the apartment stuff, which is the whole show, like that's kind of where we were like, okay, well, I think we know what we want to do with this guy. And we finally found who he is. Because it's, it, it's, it, it's not just me anymore. When I wrote it, based off of me. But now it was like, it's me and Emilio. It's like mm. our baby, Andy. When, when the both of you look back at who you were during the Instant Crush time, and you look at yourself now, what would you say is the biggest difference between those two people? Um, <laughs> when, uh, I think one of the biggest differences, if I look back then and compare it to who I am now, is uh, when I was portraying Andy, I, I think that there is a lot of... Uh, what was so much fun about that character was how animated he was and how um, just full of life, Andy. Um, and uh, since then, I've become way more jaded and, and full of less life. Nice. You leave off on that? 
No, no. No, no. I think I, I didn't. I I wanted to think it was a joke, but I was like, if it isn't, I'm fine with either. It's, or it's not really. No, no, not the, no, no. I think reality. I think there's. It's I don't reality. know. No, there's, I do really. You, you. I think <laughs> being in this in this industry specifically too, like, and it's not that I have lost any sort of life or energy or 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 or, or positiveness towards you know this dream that I've been on, you know, with you guys. But 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 you 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 get a more validation of, of of who you are as an artist as you continue through the trenches and as you you get more scarring you know more artistic scarring you know you 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 solidify a little bit of who you are and your and your place and what you bring to the table and what you want to do. I think when I was playing Andy, there was a more of a, a of a free fall through this industry of just flowing with it and just going with it and and being positive and 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 grateful and I still have that positivity and that gratefulness but now I think there's a more directness uh, there's a there's a more uh, a steering of, of where I I want to torpedo down towards you know mm -hmm. rather than free falling and, and just kind of going with the wind. Your career, your your focus is more streamlined. It's more streamlined. My, all everything, my energy, my 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 visions, everything. And I I I I, I yeah, it can take away a little bit of that like looseness, uh, which came with being you know yeah how you were back. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. interesting. There's, I didn't, I there's didn't like a that way, yeah. there's like a there was there was a not an immaturity with Andy, but there was like a a, a young like 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 he was hoven and like you know not that I'm not you know full of that life anymore. I can't emphasize that enough. But like you know, there's a there's a certain level of grit that 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 gets under your belt absolutely. after yeah Definitely. after a while. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, I've got to say, um, <laughs> I do I do agree um, from a different angle, but I do agree. I think it uh, it's been just as challenging. Um, as it was back then, you know, I'm t I, I was just saying that I was in a, a weird place, uh, like the, the headspace that I was in, I, I just had, uh, I was kind of starting over. And it feels like that every fucking time after every job, I feel like I'm starting over. And that's where I relate to the grit that you mentioned. It's like, you would think it's like, oh, I booked a project like onward and upward. And it's like, on the one hand, sure. You, you have one more thing on your resume, one more thing on your reel, and one more experience, um, a new family, so to speak. But um, out there in the world, on your own, which is the reality, uh, it's, it's hard. It resets every time, especially for actors. I think um, I've been struggling because now I got a taste of what it's like to be cast for my performance and nothing else. Because if you look at the breakdown for Cindy, she's petite, she has freckles, she wears glasses, she has long hair. And <laughs> this is Cindy. Um, I don't fit the description. She don't got any of those things. But, um, but like you were saying earlier, there was just something that clicked and, and that was enough. But in the real world, quote unquote, in the bigger game, it's not enough. It's never enough. So um, I, I just feel like uh, since shooting Instant Crush, I keep tripping over the same rock. I'm constantly trying to prove myself because I got a taste of someone believing in me and my talent. And so I'm, I'm still holding on to that, but I have to wake up. I have to come to the realization that there is a game and I, and I am a player and mm -hmm. no one's holding a gun to my head. This is what I want to do. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. I have to navigate that. I have to, how do I, how do I do this thing that I want to do, but jump through all these fucking hoops and walk through fire and walk on water and like just small talk, ew. And I, you know, like mm -hmm. how do I do all of that yeah. just to do this one little thing I want to do, which really shouldn't be such a damn uh, fucking show to get to because it should be authentic, it should be real. So like if someone's right for the part, someone's right. I was, j what did I tell you right before we started recording? that a project I didn't get cast on, mm -hmm. I looked it up and the woman who was cast put me at peace with not getting the role. Cause I realized Definitely. she was right for the part and it would be selfish of me to be upset or jealous that she got it and I didn't because I realized, wow, I could find that character in me, mm -hmm. but she is that character. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy for her. She got it, awesome. But like, it's so rare 
for that to happen yeah. in this industry. Yeah. And he's right. It's like it beats you down. And so you have to kind of build your backbone. And that's what I've been doing this whole year. Um, but on another note, on a more. So if you want to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be an actor. Not, yeah, I hope we're not <laughs> deflating anybody. No, no. It's, yeah, it's just the reality. Um, by all means, like, go for it. If it's what you want to do, go for it. But just know that there there's a lot to it. It's not just what you see on social media. Yeah, it's not always uh, rainbows and butterflies. No. It's compromise. <laughs> it moves us along. Nope. Okay. Yep. It's Maroon 5? Yep. Yeah, thank yep. you. All right, cool. I just awesome. didn't want to sing it. I don't mind spending <laughs> every day. Out on the corner in the park. Stop before they sue us. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, fuck you, Adam oh, thing. You're not going to get me this time, <laughs> bitch. This time. Anyway. He's gone before, apparently. Not this time. I wish, <laughs> I, wish, this time. I wish we had enough money to have Adam Levine, like, Just slowly come into it. And then he heard you say, damn it. We'll get 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 it. Well, it's like that key and peel episode. The good thing is, I love that I, once again, yet again, made the right choice in casting. It's another solidified moment in Brown history Good that job, will Chris. not be right. Thank you. Let's give it up for me. <laughs> these people, no, but really, these people are fucking superstars, and the, the their level two is happening as we fucking speak. Let's talk new projects, everybody. Okay. Fuck yeah, level two. So um, I don't know how much you two know about the season, but this is called the Us Podcast Level Two because me and Chris feel we've upgraded from the versions of us last year. Hell yeah. yeah. Like we're in a different place. Chris likes to call it the prequel to who we are now. Yeah, for sure. That first ep- the first season was a prequel. Absolutely. Yeah. And so like now we're we're going into our own, we're building we're creating the projects that are going to define us for like the rest of our lives. Uh, and so we want to talk about the things you're doing now and what's like kind of shaping your life now. Who wants to start? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, first of all, I love that. I love that you guys are aware that, you know, season one of this podcast was a prequel and that you were, like, on this journey and solidifying yourselves, you know, as artists. And you guys are doing a kick-ass job. I can't emphasize you, that man. enough. How yeah, great this really show are. is, how great you guys are, and how comfortable it is to speak with people like you. And, and, and yeah, it's just an honor to call you guys my friends, oh, like, first and family. foremost. Family, for family, sure. Y'all. You all right. <laughs> yeah, all this, like, you're right. You're cool. You're, yeah. you're cool. No, really. Yeah, for you too. You're great. Um, but but what are you working on, Zelda? Um, I have. <laughs> don't no. I, I will gas you up if you don't say it. No, 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 no. Um, I have representation now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so isn't that cool? That's good, dude. I post so. post instant crush, man. Can I say? It? No, you can say. It. Go ahead. What? Post instant crush. <laughs> post instant crush. Because you you talk about how you go into you were you went into that project like you know of uh, 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 it was very like you know difficult time for you. There's adversity. You were going through a lot of changes, and then and then you never knew that after instant crush, my agency reached out to me and was like, yo. Who is this individual? This person's super dope, and I like instantly was like, "Bruh, now do it!" And 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 how has that been going, bro? Out to you, that's so nice. I thought you oh, were... bruh, yeah, I can show you the email. Absolutely. He texted me. He said, "Yo, my agent super love Nazal and, and yeah. all these other people." That's so nice. And I was just like, I was just like, I was just like, "What about me, Emilio?" <laughs> they love, they love Chris. They don't sign directors or writers. It's oh, just, it's just talent. I'll get them next time. <laughs> Writer and director department. No, no, not that. No, I, no, no, definitely not. He was like, for sure. He's like, they shut up, shut up, shut up. up. Shut up. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that's so cool. Like, yes, I, I that's just think awesome. that's cool because you never know like what's gonna happen around the corner. Like, you never know what instant crush is gonna turn into next. Like, mm-hmm. an opportunity with new representation. That's awesome. Yep. But talk about the thing you've been doing that's really, really cool. Please. Um, <laughs> Uh, in this case, cool means scary. Um, I've been writing music. Hey! My girl's dropping fire tracks. <laughs> Check her out on Spotify and Apple Music and every other music streaming site. How can they find you, dude? Oh my god, thanks, guys. Um, Bro, your music is we're hype. great. We're hype. It's, it's fucking so amazing. good. It's it literally sick. comes on randomly, and I'll be like jamming out to it. And you know, when sometimes friends give you music, it's just like, oh, cool. Like, no, it's like, it's so legit and sounds professional. And so, wait a minute, on this oh musical god. note, I'm sorry, I know I'm hijacking this a little bit because this is something I'm immensely proud of is just my friends being like, 
you know, a multitude of artists. They're not just actors. They're not just directors. Because Chris does the same thing. <laughs> That's a Chris has yeah, so yeah. many. Chris has not only incredible tracks, but laughing? incredible like visual uh, films that oh, go along thanks, with dude. his dude. Astro Ari, you sent that to me way before you dropped it. And I was bumping that oh, in yeah. my car yeah, he was. all the time. You, that track is hot. Sorry. No, Go no, ahead. no. This is good because it's true. Oh. And I also want to call I want to piggyback on that. When you say you're gonna do something, you fucking do it. Oh yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's that's it's rare. That's the only way to do it. No, but it's you don't you don't understand that how rare That's that a is. huge thing, Chris. It's a big and thing. And you're younger than us, both yeah, you guys, I know. man. <laughs> that's something like <laughs> It's great. It's really. It's, That's um, the bee's knees, man. Yeah, Thank you. It's yeah, like no. Respectable. It really yeah, I mean, I, 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 what better now time to then to do it? <laughs> Why is music so scary to make? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> because it's like <laughs> I'm writing it, and mm. um, I'm not trained, mm -hmm. and I, the experience I have is like my car and <laughs> locking myself in my room because my mom was super strict so I would just like teach myself an instrument and then buy another one and do the same thing buy another one and that's kind of how I came to play music it's just by teaching myself in my room when I was depressed and then moving out here you meet actual people in the industry and I'm like whoa I'm never gonna do this for a living there's yeah, no way yeah I mean it's so it's First of all, it's so hard. I mean, acting is hard. Fuck, music is really hard. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, there's also the side of it where it's like, I, I want to be respected. When I put something out, I want it to be good quality. I want to take my time. I want to make sure that I'm saying something that means something, not just to me, but hopefully to someone else who's hearing it. So um, all of these factors in, I'm like, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. So I'm scaring myself. I'm psyching myself out of it. But then... Uh, then again, you know, when you consider the industry at large, it's like, whoa, like, how the hell am I going to do this? I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm not trained. I've never done this shit. So, like, you know, then you meet just the right people. And in my case, it was uh, David Pizzamenti. He's the one who... Shout uh, out. Shout out. <coughs> huge shout out. He's the one who's uh, produced everything. And um, it was, like, the short side of the story is um, some years back, a, fr a mutual friend of ours introduced us. And um, we've been loosely working together ever since and it was always just like hey i have this loose song idea come on over let's record it cool let's do that and then more recently um i have like this handful of songs that i've written and they're all more or less in the same genre and they tap into um this jazz that i used to perform because it kind of stuck with me um and I, I wanted it to mean something, and so we worked on it for a little while, and then and a long while, and uh, finally putting it out was just so fucking scary because I never intended to. It was just a hobby. It was something that I liked to do and something kind of that I needed to do. I've always been the person that writes in a journal. I have journals dating back from when I was a wee lassie. And um, yeah, and then so like writing music was just kind of an extension of that. I just didn't expect it to go anywhere. It's mm -hmm. very personal. And um, here we are just putting it out literally on the, the <coughs> quote unquote Checking legitimate along. platform. Yes. So Streaming I'm like, platforms. anyone can hear this. This is. Sherry sure has the picture on fucking uh, iTunes. That's sick. That's so sick. How about you do that? Tell me after. Um, <laughs> Everyone, that listen, fucking links right here. Go listen, and now you'll know. Links are all going to be in the descriptions of all our episodes. Fucking powerhouse. How does one human hold so much talent? You can skate. You can <laughs> act. You can sing. You can dance. You can... All of it requires falling again and again. So just get back up. You can do it. I've never... So good. <laughs> All of it does Speaking require Speaking the truth, bombs. sweet ass. I, I love that voice. Sorry. I love that, dude. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. What am I doing? Dun. Emilio. I thought you were, yeah, you were dropping a beat, God. bro. Um, I thought I was going to get a musical um uh, Yeah, that was it. Emilio. Oh, shit, sorry. Emilio. There you go. Uh, what's so that? What, for, what am I, I mean, most of our ladies that, uh, that are watching this are for sure <laughs> here. They're like, I want him to talk about it. So here he is. He's talking about it. Emilio, uh, talk about a little, a little thing in. you're doing, a little thing plug you're doing. In. So okay, uh, not the big thing, but then also the short film you got. Oh, so wait, which one? What, so what am I first, talking first, about first, first, the little big thing, and then the short film. 
because that's the what short said. film's the big thing. And then the other thing is, is the little big thing. Is the little big thing. Uh, I'm on this television show on Netflix called The Society. <laughs> Netflix. You can catch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fat chicks. <laughs> oh, wait. That's. Big dicks. No, no, no. no, 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 no Sound effects. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Netflix is like. Oh, sorry. That's going to sound. Damn, he's like. Anyway, let's go. No, yeah. Thank you, all you guys, for that. There's a show called The Society on Netflix. You can stream the whole first season right now. It's fantastic. It's 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 a lot of fun. It's it's really crazy. It's about a bunch of young teenagers who get somehow transported into a new world or new reality of a town that is identical to the town that they grew up in, except that there's no parents and no internet and nobody else. It's just the high school class. So they are forced to create a new society on their own. And I play uh, Jason, uh, who's a jock, uh, one of the military jock bros. Um, and uh, yeah. Perfectly perfect job. You know, As we heard right, before. <laughs> right in my vein. A more layers, um, dynamic job. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's definitely a layer. A real guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. Um, and uh, yeah, he's. Uh, it was an incredible opportunity to work with, um, you know, not only everybody in the cast, but you know, with with a, a, a streaming giant like Netflix, uh, who's really just spearheading, you know, how we consume and create media, you know, in the last decade. So. It's been just an incredible opportunity. Um, super excited that we go to uh, back to Boston in 2020 to film season two. Woo-hoo! And that's going to be season really, really two. awesome. You, you, can, you can't get rid of them yet. Can't Netflix. get rid of me, not yet. <laughs> nope. Um, He's here for a second one. Also, just a little, uh, uh, a little exclusive to this podcast only. I oh. hear that there's going to be more than 10 episodes for season two. Oh, shit. <laughs> so awesome. be oh, part of the ladies are just... <laughs> Exclusive. Yeah, maybe or, uh, yeah. You know what you're doing. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't. But, but, but it's been a great opportunity, guys. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Do you remember, do you remember right before you got this job, we were going to do the Instant Crush reshoots, and then you had told me, like, yo, brother, like, uh, I hate to ask you for this, but I'm going to need to ask just for, like, a little bit of compensation just because it's going to take time in my day. We're like, for sure, for sure, we'll work something out. Yeah. Literally, like the next day, I think you were just like, "Hey, brother, by the way, don't worry about the, <laughs> don't worry about that payment on the on the shoot. Like, I got Did it." Did that like, was that in the same timeline? It, it was re- oh, it was literally God. like a day or yeah. literally the next day or a day or two after, and then I'm like, "What happened?" And you're like, "God, you like when we met up, you're like, bro, I got this Netflix show. I'm all good." And I was wow. Just like, hey, money making money, money. Wow. We were in my we were in my dad's old. Now Civic wait, driving. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. I wanna. <laughs> I want to clarify this story a little bit because it wasn't it wasn't just the fact that I had this Netflix show. I feel like yes, that was a huge incentive to buy groceries and, and work for free for a little bit. But but also uh, I did have I remember this moment. I remember I remember feeling really bad. I remember feeling really bad that I was like asking for money to work. And it's a tough balance being an artist. You know, you want to support your friends and you want to do this work, but also you want to have like, you want to know your own worth. Yeah, you know, you it's want completely to. Completely fair. Completely fair. And, and, but I remember asking that and feeling really, really bad about it. And I remember thinking, God, dude, who the heck do you think you are? Like, Chris is making this beautiful work. Like, get your ego out of it and go help him finish this thing so like the world can see it and i did have it wasn't just solely because i'm a financial monster and like all of a sudden like and i have netflix pain no like that definitely influenced it but but i definitely had a struggle and a realization of like yo man finish the work don't trip about the money stuff let that take care of itself and not to go on a soapbox about like entrusting the universe or anything like that but like just trust that it's going to work out okay. Yeah. If you make the, the the good judgment call to you, have faith that the next step you're going to be taken care of. And I was, you know, and, and, and all sides of the coin, not just Netflix, but, you know, with how Instant Crush turned out. Those reshoots were some of the coolest yeah, stuff. They, they Walking really across the side. Yeah, that montage is sick. Yeah. And you got to showcase your community through yeah, that, that, man. Yeah, that was yeah. definitely the goal with that. And again, I have to shout out Ashim for that because that was his idea to be like, you can use this opportunity. We'll go out. We, we shot with like a different camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just go out to, 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 to iconic 
saw sell a landmarks and just shoot Andy doing something around it. So we yeah, shot man. in front of Gage Bowl. Uh, we shot at the at the Pacific Street that the, that shot where you're walking through past the title and the the your famous restaurant. Well, it's not your Taco, famous Taco's restaurant. Yeah, yeah, the burrito. And yeah, like, like, Pino Pino burrito. In, my, in the Carmona verse is what it's called. Carmona. Yeah. That's so good. But yeah, that was yeah, yeah that was. Uh, Thank you for that. Yeah, that was that that was just a big moment because I remember it, I didn't even know what to expect from that Netflix show. I was even like, I remember when I was watching you post it on your stories, I was like, oh damn, I guess Emila's really in this. Cause because <laughs> I had an actor before who was in La La Land. The guy who plays the dad in in, uh, in, in Bad Labor, or Daisy's dad in the beginning, the call the police or whatever. Uh -huh. He was in La La Land. He shot us like a full scene and they cut him like like right before the movie came out. Yeah, oh. and so you never I didn't. Yeah, so this, I, was, I never industry. knew. But when I saw that you were there, like filming car chases, yeah, I was dude, like, the famous oh, GIF of you going. Ah, yeah. dude. That one, they love we're that. We're pulling photo. it up right here. <laughs> they they milk that <laughs> photo oh, so yes, much, dude. <laughs> it's all like, we need one one of those from you. No, no, go. Ah, go. No, no, ah, do it. It's all like, no, no, do it. <laughs> do it. Don't do that. Well, don't do. Don't. You'll have, they'll have it forever, and you'll. And that's why I'm not yeah. doing it. You do have he one more project. <laughs> uh, I do. You have uh, one more project to talk I, about. Uh, I do. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I just finished actually today. I think I got the master. Final cut is that what you call it? Like yeah, the master. Yeah, of, picture uh, lock. Was the, it the picture the lock? Picture lock of uh, of a short film <sighs> that I wrote and produced. Holy yeah, God. yeah. 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 That's I, awesome. I, hey, direct? I, no, 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 I no, didn't. Direct I didn't direct. <laughs> not yet. Not this project. No, I was very fortunate enough actually to collaborate with a wonderful uh, Latina young filmmaker who I actually went to school with. I went to Cal Arts Sick. with. She was in the film and video program. Um, and she was the biggest uh, just blessing and guardian angel because I had this idea and I knew that I wanted to create something and, you know, exercise other, you know, creative muscles and, and, and stay busy within the industry and not having just to succumb to whatever Hollywood wants to, you know, throw at me. And, uh, and I think all those are very important. And Erica Ortiz is the name of this fabulous young filmmaker. She spearheaded everything. It was very collaborative. I used a lot of resources and individuals that I had gone to school with, and I think that's the biggest benefit of going to school is so that you get you know, this network of not only really talented, top-tier individuals, but people you consider family that you want to collaborate with, that you want to work with, that understand your vision and, and, and what you're trying to achieve. Um, so that was a huge blessing, getting all those pieces together and, and, and just how helpful everyone was and how passionate everyone was, very much like Instant Crush, to get the job done. But Erica like was just the quarterback, the leader. She did everything in pre-production. She filmed the stinking thing, and then she did everything in post-production. You know, and I had help along the way. Don't get me wrong. You know, you helped me, Chris. Remember, I hit you up, and I was yeah, like, I "Dude, notes. give me, give me a colorist, like please." Oh, I and the colorist not... too. Yeah, 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 we. I hooked up with. Uh, <laughs> Ken. Oh no, sorry, Sykes. Like, no, like... Rustam. 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 Rustam Awesome Rustam, Rustam hooked it up and then they were able to network and they worked on another short film after my short film and so he got like Fuck two yeah. gigs from oh, that yes. so it was like a it was a huge Level collaborative two. process yeah, yeah man beautiful. that's awesome dude so when yeah. how, what's any plans for it or do you not want to say yet I, I, truthfully, like all the details are still up in the air. So, like, you got to do gotcha. like the festival circuit and see how well it does there. And we've already submitted to a really big festival that I'm, you know, fingers crossed for. But a lot of like the rules and regulations um, with these festivals is that you can't really like screen it or release yeah, it, yeah, or, yeah. you know, because they want the exclusivity mm -hmm. to it. Um, but but I think it's a really good story. And you know, same thing with Instant Crush, man. Regardless of you know how much success it quote unquote has at the end of the day i'm i'm immensely proud of of what this team was able to put together and to have you know a tangible like a thing like a physical tangible object you know digital object that i can look back to and be like we made a thing as actors we don't really get that opportunity too much if we're lucky enough to be in film and television and something you know like Netflix that's going to be up there for a while that I can look back on but as actors it's all in our imaginations you know a, a, a musician has an instrument a, a, a sculptor has you know marble but actors it's all like in our heads and 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 we're, we're imagining these circumstances and imagining these characters so just to have a tangible you know short film that that is 
not only mine, but from a memory, from a childhood memory. That's just, it's such such a special thing. And, and I implore and, and highly suggest to anyone listening, uh, if you have any inkling of, of creating something, whether it be film or art or whatever, just do it. Do just it. do it. Take that first step. Yeah. And that's all scary. you need. Even if it's scary, even if it's intimidating, even if, you know, all your chips are on the line, just do it Especially and trust. Especially if it's scary. Because I've learned that when something is so scary, but you think about it so much anyway, it's because you really want it. And because you want it to be good. And that's a great thing. You know, when you act on that fear, you realize that's the only thing in your way. And once you get past it, you can do so much more. Fucking beautiful. Let's go. Let's go get that final guest. <laughs> I'm speechless. Let's go get that final guest, bro. And wrap All this right, shit up. let's wrap this baby up. <clears throat> oh, look, your your old friend. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Her face. Rosie. She's back. <laughs> get over here, my love. How are you? The, the What's going stepping on? on the mic. So oh, it's okay. <laughs> the. Like she always looks depressed. The one cast that's member. Just, that's just her face. The one cast member that none of you ever talked about. <laughs> fucking Rosie. Because she stole the show. Yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> that's why. She was such a diva, though. Yeah, she man. was. How so? Oh Has she no, gotten fatter she wasn't. since the last time you saw her? But yeah, I do dude, she's totally bigger. Yeah. Hell yeah. 100% bigger. She was super skinny. Come here, baby. <laughs> What's up, itchy butt? Like Don't it. listen to them. Look at this dog. All right, well, that was our episode, y'all. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, (laughs) (laughs) thank you for everything Uh, yeah does anybody have any last words or plugs anything they want to plug right before we go we only have like two minutes of film left I just want to say thank you go to Spotify and look up Nisalda's song Nisalda please go on Netflix and watch The Society hell yeah go on Me Too and watch Instant Cry (laughs) yeah and And then listen to to the podcast podcast. (laughs) thank you very much because even when we lose we We win win. thank you very much y'all catch you later What's up everybody, it's your boy Chris Chris, thanks for listening to another fucking awesome episode of the Us Podcast Level 2 If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow at the Chris Carmona You can follow me at Angel I Salinas underscore Make sure to follow the podcast on Instagram at us podcast and check out our YouTube channels because we really need that support from y'all right now. <laughs> listen to us on Spotify, listen to us on Apple Music, listen to us on Stitcher, literally anywhere you can get your podcast. You literally have no fucking excuse not to listen to us. Bitch! <laughs> Whoa! I'm back, baby! Just kidding. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. Oh, thanks, y'all. <laughs> Holy shit. We, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs>